Well, welcome back to the channel guys and as you can see I'm back in the kitchen and if you thought that my missus was angry after doing the 20 things to try with pellets video then she's going to be super mad when she sees what I'm doing here with this cheese paste because trust me what's in front of me now stinks and it'll stink even more by the time I'm finished but anyway by the by thanks everyone who watched have been watching my chub videos recently um really appreciate it like I say it's something that um, I'm really enjoying it at the moment and although it's not match fishing related and all that sort of stuff um, it's just real nice fishing and let's be frank it's what we can all get out and do at the moment so one thing after that video was you know obviously I talked about catching loads of fish on cheese paste and I had loads of questions asking about the recipe and I've had people on messenger and all that business asking me about what the recipe is it's really simple i've kind of borrowed it off different places and come up with something that sort of worked for me and i've caught loads of fish on it now including that beautiful six pound two two ounce fish so um let's just run a few a few of the bits that you need before you get started obviously you're going to need a cheese grater so i just have one of these ones i think it's from is it from ikea yeah it's from ikea it's got like a, a grater in a bowl uh, to contain everything uh obviously a nice mixing bowl uh just one one of the ones out of the kitchen uh, you're gonna need a spoon and a fork to do some like mashing up and getting some ingredients out um, a pair of scissors never hurts um, obviously you want a nice chopping board because you don't really want to get it on your surfaces um, moving on to the actual ingredients I've got some really stinky Stilton sort of cheese so blue, nice blue Stilton absolutely I mean, it's beautiful, but it stinks. So I've got two blocks of that. I'm gonna make a nice big sort of job lot of paste and I'll, I'll stick some in the freezer. Um, so I've got two blocks of uh, Stilton here. And then I've got some extra mature cheddar. Again, that stinks, but it's really nice. I love cheese, so <laughs> it's not a bad thing for me. Um, but I've got half a block of that. Uh, I can always add a bit more of that if I feel I need to, but um, I kind of want the blue cheese to be the boss part of this mix. Uh, I've got some Philadelphia, so some soft cheese. Um, I can just add that to give the mix a bit of um, like moisture. Um, I want the paste to be nice and soft, and I think adding a bit of that will just, it's another cheese that can get smelly, but obviously it gives me a bit of moisture. I've got some margarine. Uh, just all I'm gonna do is take a couple of spoonfuls of that, put it in the mix, and the reason I add that is Obviously, the days that we're out chub fishing are generally pretty cold, you know, uh, and and the uh, cheese paste goes rock hard if you're not careful. Um, so adding a bit of that just helps it keep a bit of pliability to it and keeps it nice and soft. Obviously, you don't want a rock hard paste to strike through. Um, you can use, I think it's short crust pastry a lot of the guys use, um, but I've not experimented with that, so I can't really comment on that. <clears throat> uh, but the marge does a good job. Um, I've got another... I've got some more cheddar, just some grated cheddar. Again, if I feel like the mix just needs a bit more uh, sort of cheese in it, then I'll add a bit of that. Um, salt is really important, I think. I think that's a massive, massive, massive factor in this bait success. Um, I've been using sea salt, uh, but you can use garlic salt as well. Uh, a lot of anglers swear by adding garlic to the cheese paste, so I'm, a I'm actually gonna experiment with that today. Uh, this is a fresh batch, so I'm gonna give that a little try. Uh, so we've got garlic salt there and sea salt. Don't be shy with either. Next ingredient, one that I've not added before, but loads of people hit me up after the last video and mentioned that, um, that they weren't affiliated with Sonia Bates at all. So this is not just a pluggy thing. Uh, the, the hemp and cheesy garlic oil is really good. And, you know, it's a good addition to your cheese paste. So I am actually going to add a bit of that. It's... Um, it's pretty pongy, I've got to say, it's pretty pongy. But our um, our Midlands rep, our Midlands agent, Tony Morton, is an absolute master at catching chub and barbel on River Severn, particularly around the Bewley area. Uh, he wins loads of matches and he catches loads of fish on pellets like they all do. And uh, the one thing he always says to me whenever I speak to him is, it's got to be cheesy garlic flavour, whether that's pellets or whatever, the ground bait, whatever. When it comes to fishing for barbel and chub, it's got to be cheesy garlic flavour. So we're going to have a little try with that. Uh, that oh no, there's one last ingredient that I haven't spoke about, and that's liquidised bread. Now, I will add this pretty much 50-50 to the cheese. Um, it just obviously bulks the, the uh, cheese paste out. 
uh, as well as obviously takes on all that flavor as well. And it just means it's not as expensive to make. Uh, I just got a bit of like stalish bread here that was going out and I've just blitzed it up to a nice fine consistency. I'm not too worried about it, but uh, I'll, like I say, I'll judge how much cheese I've got once I've grated it and then add some of that. I cut the crusts off incidentally, and then I blitz them up as well, and I actually feed that. That's how I've been feeding my swims. I make up a nice sort of stiff, overwet but stiff, chunky sort of brown ground bait, essentially, out the, out the crusts, and I feed that into the swim. So that's how I feed my peg. I don't feed any cheese paste. I know some anglers do, but I just prefer mash. I think it gets some fish in the swim. So that's the ingredients. Pretty standard stuff. You just want some stinky cheese, really, some bread bit of salt and a bit of marge and you're away you'll catch loads of fish with that um, but the first job is to get all this cheese grated up so I'm not going to talk through this I'm just going to grate it up and then I'll come back to you once it's all grated up okay so I've just uh, grated up all my cheese so as you can see I've got a nice big sort of bowl full of cheese there. It's probably three quarters, this blue stilton, and then the final quarter is that mature cheddar. So it's grated up pretty roughly at the minute. Um, I'm gonna have to really get in my hands in here and break it up. It's worth spending your time breaking it up. Last thing you want is lumps of stilton and stuff like that in there. Problem is, you want a really smooth texture, obviously, so the hook can pass through it. Like I said, the water's cold, the air temperature's cold, and as much as we add margin and stuff, the paste is gonna go hard, so the last thing you want is some even harder bits in there. So, right, I'm gonna get my hands in, and uh, just get all these lumps sort of broken up, so I'll, I'll come back to you in a minute when this is all nicely together and smooth. One tip I can give you when um, kneading your bait, and like I say, it needs to be smooth. It's gotta be super smooth. And this is obviously, I'm just breaking down the cheeses now to make them nice and small. Um, what I like to do, I break them off into small pieces like that. Um, and it just allows me to really get my hands in. I sort of squash it through my fingers. My hands are gonna stink after this, but I don't mind. I'd rather the bait be good than worry about that. Um, I'm, I can see there's an odd lump of that cheddar in there that's a little bit too big for my liking. So. Say so it's worth taking your time doing this. Just work it through your fingers and we'll come back in a minute when all that's done. We can add all the other ingredients soon, but I just want to make sure that my base cheese, so to speak, is um, smooth. So we'll crack on. We want it like that, nice and smooth, and then we'll come back and add the other ingredients. Right, guys, I've just spent a good few minutes kneading this paste, making it sort of relatively smooth to start with. But I'm just happy that those bigger chunks of that mature cheddar that wouldn't go through the grater without taking my fingers off, of course, is sort of a thing of the past. So we've got our cheese there, basically. Now then. Bit there, flicked off. See, that would taste beautiful right now. And what I like to do, I like to make it, I sort of punch it down into the bowl like that, you see that. I then add my other bits and bobs to it. So once I've punched it down, I sort of punch it into the bowl and it's flat then, I can sort of judge how much salt and stuff I'm putting in and how much margin, how much liquid and how much bread I've got to put in. So first thing, I'm gonna put a dollop of this filly in. Nice, good old dollop in there, get off. So we'll put that in. Yeah, let's give it two, why not? So we've got two of them in there. I want to put some cheddar in, just because it's just another type of cheese that's going in there. Nice bit of cheddar. I want to put a load of salt in. I love the salt, as I keep mentioning. So as you can see, pile of salt in there. You see that? Bit of cheddar, bit of filly. So I'm just going to knead this again together. So I've got my, my filly and my cheddar in there, my salt. I'm going to knead this in. Let's see, I'll come back in a moment when that's done. So as you can see, now I've added that filly to it. It's actually quite moist. It'll easily go through my hands and I like that. It just makes it a bit easy to work the bait. So that's 
coming together nicely that is it's really smooth now take like i say it takes time this does to get a good paste but it's worth it don't forget that this amount of paste is going to last you probably if you go once a week it's probably going to last you close to the winter because you only need a I don't know tennis ball size piece for each session so it's worth taking time getting it right it might cost you a tenner in cheese but you've literally got bait there for the for the winter so i'm still on my first batch i've made a few other batches since just for messing about really and experimenting but there we go so that's nicely worked in the filly and the uh that extra cheddar i've just put in see that nice and smooth beautiful look at that so now I'm going to add a little bit of that garlic oil and Sonia Bates cheesy garlic. So we'll add a bit of that and then we're going to add the bread and we're very close to this being finished now. So again, flatten it out. So I flattened it out. I'm just going to add, God, it stinks that. I'm not going to add loads of that. I'm just going to add a nice little suggestion of it. I, I like suggestions of flavors. I think the cheese itself is what the fish are really interested in. And then, like I say, I kind of want 50-50 bread and paste, so it's probably going to take most of this little bowl of uh, breadcrumbs, so we'll get that in. And then it's now the job of just working all this in. So I'm just going to cut away again for another minute or so. I'm going to knead all this bread in, knead the oil in, and I'll be back in a minute to show you the finished paste. It's a really good idea to do this when your wife or your kids aren't in the house because, as you can imagine, if this was smell of vision well, you can only imagine what my uh, kitchen smells like at the minute, but it's worth it. Let's say I've had so many fish on this recently that this bait here is an absolute gold mine and it has got me thinking about uses for carp and stuff like that in the future, in the winter, because the fact that the chub seem to find this from a long way away is just like a real eye-opener to me. Um, you know, I've never never relied on smells so much. In my match fishing, I always tend to think it's more vis a, a visual thing. And I always assume chub were more visual feeders, but it's really opened my eyes, this cheese paste has, and I'm really happy with how this is actually turning out. The only last thing we need to get in there some of that marge so before we get too far i'm just going to add i'm really happy with that as a paste that's really come together nicely that has so i'm just going to add a couple of dollops of marge just to keep it pliable work that in and then this paste will be good to go okay so after a lot of kneading and mixing and god knows what else we've got four generous sized balls of paste like that so as you can see real big lump of really smooth look at that that's even better than i can imagine it was going to be it's smooth there's no lumps in it nice big piece like that on the hook it's just going to be wonderful so what i like to do you might notice that at the end there i didn't put the margin till the end and that is for a reason i wanted to just make sure i had enough cheese in there to be honest with you um and then add the margin until it sort of looks a bit glossy if that makes sense um two spoonfuls seems to be about right but what i like to do i get them in a food bag uh you can either pop them in the freezer until you need it um what i actually do i take put them all in individual bags and I either stick it in the van or in the shed and just leave it. Um, I even have been playing about with putting it on the radiator in my office, which might sound disgusting. But what I'm trying to do is, this stuff definitely is better after a few weeks, there's no doubt about it. The, the, the batch that I'm catching my fish on at the moment is, well, I made it in November and it's not been in a fridge or a freezer since. So you can imagine it, it's pretty pongy. Um, and I think that that is essential. I think whatever happens, must be the breakdown, the bacteria, whatever is in there, makes it smoother and it stinks. And uh, although this already smells nice, there's no doubt about it, the smellier the better. So 
either take it in the freezer and keep taking it out and thawing it out and then putting it back in. That's a good method apparently. Um, but I've just found, for me, stick it in some bags, put it in your tackle bag and just leave it and forget about it. And then when you use it every week, it'll be getting better and better. I mean, it smells great now, it's smooth, but that, trust me, will only get better with age. So there you go. Nice little tutorial there on the uh, cheese paste sort of recipe. I think that's a really nice mix. One last thing to touch on is the color actually. Um, I really like this sort of, I don't know what you can call it. It's the blue cheese color, isn't it, essentially? It's like a off-white, greeny blue color. Um, I've seen that some anglers dye it, but I don't know, it just seems like that. It looks so natural when it's in the water, so that's what I go with anyway, and it's worked for me so far, so there you go. Nice little uh, video there on the cheese paste. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment below. I'm sure you'll all love my shirt that I'm wearing today and uh, we'll see you again soon.